Morning, everybody. Hello. Morning. A few minutes late. <coughs> um, so, first of all, a bit of housekeeping. If everyone could stay muted, it would just make it a good audio experience for everybody. Um, there will be opportunity for questions. I will be stopping at a couple of points throughout the session to take questions. We may not be able to answer all of them on the session, but we certainly will follow up and answer all the questions via email after if there's any, anything that's been unanswered. We're going to try and keep it to 40 minutes, if, if at all possible. Um, so I'll try and keep moving as, as much as possible. So what's the purpose of this session? Why, why are we here? So I guess you're occasionally faced with situations where someone has fallen and you need to lift them with minimal risk to the fallen person or to the caregivers. You might be new to the Razor, or you might be familiar with the Razor 1, but we're going to show you the Razor 2 today, which is a new and improved version of the Razor, which was brought out in January this year in the UK. So let's start with a bit of data around falls. Um, falls account for 40% of ambulance call-outs across the UK. And 40, out of the, that 40% of ambulance call-outs, 70% of those didn't need an ambulance response. So it's taking up a lot of ambulance time. Um, and if we can do anything to reduce the pressure on them, um, then all the better. Plus, falls typically come under the category four of the ambulance falls, uh, the ambulance response program, which means that's the lowest priority because they're, they're giving more priority to cardiac arrests and, and trauma and that sort of thing. So it can result in long lives for people that have fallen, particularly if, if the ambulance service are under pressure, um, which they are at the moment, obviously. So we don't want any further complications from long lives or from unnecessary ambulance visits. So let's jump into a demonstration of the razor chair. So my colleague Ruben is going to, um, colleague Ruben is going to come and have a fall for me, and we'll show you how the razor works. Do you mind having a lie down? So the first thing we'll do, obviously, is to check that he's uninjured. This the razor chair will, um, wouldn't be used when there's any injury, particularly um, suspected fractures. Um, of lower limbs and if there's any risk of a, a stroke or heart attack causing the fall to start with. This is for mechanical non-injury falls. So, start off with, we've got the seat unit here. Take the cover off that. And what we're going to do is make sure we can lift his knees. Like so. And we can set the seat unit underneath. Tuck it up nice and close to the thighs. Then in this bag here, we've got all the backrests and lifting arms. So if anyone's familiar with the Razor 1, this is slightly different in terms of that it's not color coded anymore. It's identical to the other backrests. You, you can go in either way, doesn't matter. And it has a safety strap on here as opposed to on the seat unit. The benefit of this is that it can be either down here or like a lap strap or further up to the top if somebody needs more support around the torso. So to put the backrest in, we're just going to put this arm across the opposite shoulder. That lifts the shoulder blade so you can slip that underneath and click into place. You'll have heard the beep when I engage that, it just tells you that it's been slotted into the right place. Let's go to the next slide. Again, this arm across the opposite shoulder, tuck it underneath, and click into place. And you can do up the safety belt. Doesn't have to be very tight because it's mainly for reassurance. Then we have four of these lifting arms. They are totally identical, so whether it goes in as a leg or in the lifting arms, it, it's exactly the same fitting. Same on the other side. 
Then this is the, the last, when you put in the last component, it's going to make a different sound which confirms that all the pieces are in the right place. I don't know if you can see from there, but there's, a, there's an orange light on the end of the lifting arm. That will go green when it's all correctly assembled. So there's my sound to tell me that it's all correctly assembled. And the light has gone green, so we're good to lift. So if I now pop out the, the uh, remote control from the mm -hmm. side, that just fits in there via a magnet. That's just a simple up and down there. So I'm going to support the fallen person's head and press up. As soon as I take my finger off the button, it will stop. So I can stop at a fairly comfortable seated position, make sure that he's got his bearings and he's stable. A lot of people, particularly elderly frail when they've been on the floor, are a little bit dizzy, a little bit um, confused when they first come up. So we can get him a cup of tea, make sure he's got his strength back and he's ready to go. Then we can get a rotor stand or a walking frame or something, if, if needed, we can go right away up to a perching position. There we go. So we just undo the safety strap and he can mobilize and walk away. So, a, a little bit about the razor. It's the um, safe working load is 24 stone, or 150 kilos. Um, in terms of charging, it is battery. Um, we have a charging light on the side there. You'll be able to see the battery indicator. If you lifted 24 stone every time, it would do about 40 lifts per charge. And if you're charging it from completely flat, it will take about six hours. That's a fairly brief overview of the razor. Does, at this stage, does anybody have any questions? I think my colleague Lottie, who's just off camera here, will um, read, read a few out for me. What have we got here? No questions thus far. No questions thus far. Okay, very good. Um, so the next part of the session will be looking at other ways to, to lift, some of the, in comparison to the traditional methods of lifting. And the first one we're going to look at is the Manga Camel. Um, we also sell the, the Manga Camel. It's a system that's been around for years. Um, most people would be, that would be their, their go-to, or the Manga products, the Camel or the Elk would be their go-to um, lifting products. So we'll see how that works in comparison to the razor. I'm just going to take this off screen rather than lower it down to save time. So my colleague Ruben is going to have another ball for me and we'll lift him using the camera. Mm -hmm. So first thing we're going to have to do is roll him onto his side. So just to make it clear, I'm not fully manual handling trained, so apologies to any manual handling trainers out there who are maybe doing this slightly incorrectly, but we'll see. So cross your arms and bend this leg up. There we go. And then roll you onto your side. Ideal. Then this is the manga camel. It's an inflatable cushion. Um, which goes up into like a seated position. So it's very crucial on this to get the positioning exactly right because you don't want it inflating and his, he's in the wrong position. So I'm going to try and align his head with the logo at the top. Bring it fairly close to him. We can get a tubulous lighty like so. And tuck it underneath as we can. 
and then rolling onto that, like so, and then And just put them onto the onto the camel. Like so. Then I'm just going to remove the slide sheet. Then we have a compressor here to pump it up, and a set of tubes here. All these tubes are numbered from one to four and they've got color coding to fit into the different parts of the cushion because it's made up of four different sections. To, um, so I'll start with number one. All the connections are under the head here. So start with number one. Number two. We go. So all four mm -hmm. hoses are connected to the cushion, and then the other one goes into the, the compressor there. I'm just going to turn that on. There we go. Then, using the buttons on the hand control, we're just going to start inflating the, the system. So start work from number one all the way to number four. Just keep pressing the button down until it's until it stops automatically. Then you can move on to the next one. So, first one will be the backrest. Okay, and then moving to number two. And number three, um, you just have to be a little bit aware of keeping it stable as it's pumping up because until the until the each air sac is full, it can be a tiny bit unstable. There we go. There is one more. There is one more layer, and um, you don't have to do that last one, depending on the height of the person. Um, just in the interest of speed, this time um, we're going to stop at this one. I think we know Ruben can stand up, which is good. 
Um, so let's move on to the next product. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions at this stage in terms of comparison between the camel and the razor? We have any questions come through, Lottie? Um, yeah, we've had quite a lot of questions, I think, mainly around the razor. So okay. I don't know when you want to cover those up. Yeah, let's do that now. Okay. Um, so the first question is, um, will it work on most floor surfaces and be suitable outdoors? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, if you jump onto our YouTube channel, it's actually a, quite an amusing video of doing lifting with the razor on different surfaces. Um, and on there, we did a lift on the beach, a lift on grass, a lift on gravel. Um, so yeah, it works on carpet, thick rug, lino, tiles, you name it, it will lift. Yeah. Only, t only place I wouldn't lift it is in a boggy field or in the middle of a puddle. But other than that, it will, it will work anyway. Any other questions? Does the um, razor come under Lola? Interesting question. We have had this checked out. It doesn't come under Lola. It comes under Pure, which is the provision of use for work equipment. Um, it doesn't come under Lola because, strictly speaking, it doesn't lift your feet off the floor. Good question. So it doesn't need a six-monthly Lola service. Uh, it will just need an annual service under the pure regulations. Any more? Um, yeah, what's the maximum um, time weight for this razor? So the safe working load is 24 stone. That's 150 kilos. Um, that is, that's the safe working load of the razor. Yeah. There's a few more. I don't know whether you want to answer them. Yeah, now. I think we've got a bit of time. Um, is the seat unit larger than the first model of the razor? Very good question. Yes, in terms of width, it is slightly wider. Um, that's a bit of a double-edged sword because it's then slightly, mm -hmm. you can't fit into quite so tight a space, um, but you can obviously fit somebody on it that's a bit broader. Yeah. Is there any pressure relief in the seat? There isn't any pressure relief in the seat. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, it's as compact as possibly can, so it can fit under people's legs, just so there's not extra bulk for, for any padding. The comment I would make is that it's not supposed to be an armchair. Um, you're going to want to transfer off it as soon as you possibly can back into your normal pressure relieving chair. It's just for, a, an, um, a, just for lifting purposes. In terms of shearing um, on the lifting up, there's no, you don't actually move on the chair itself, so there's no, there's no shear or friction on that. Um, because the, the angle between the seat unit and the backrest is constant as it comes up. So it's, it wouldn't give you the same feeling you'd get in a profiling bed, for instance. I hope that answers the question. Any more? Can you insert a hoist sling? You can insert a hoist sling um, in the same way that you would be able to on like a wheelchair or something like that. Um, it's not unheard of for people to... Um, then transfer off the razor using something like a, a stand aid with the with the smaller hoist sling. Um, yeah, I hope that I hope that answers the question. Um, a question around price comparison for the camel and the razor. The razor is three one two nine three thousand one hundred twenty nine. Um, Lottie might be able to tell me better on the camel price. It's about two and a half thousand. Yes. Yeah. So it is, the razor is more expensive, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the price comparison. Any and lastly, questions? there's just been a few questions about the um, kind of minimum height of somebody that can use the razor versus the maximum height. Yes, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, because you can stop the razor at any point, um, you, can, you can lift it up until somebody as it is at the right height for them to move. So it doesn't go up in stages where there's a minimum or maximum height. The only time I have found it a, a challenge with, with somebody that was extremely short and um, the height that was good for him to mobilise, the razor was actually still quite reclined. So it just meant a bit more effort leaning forward to then, to then stand up. But strictly speaking, there's no minimum height as such to use it from. Um, likewise, a maximum height. Um, there's no strict maximum height. Just obviously, the taller somebody is, 
the more the more angle they're going to have in their knees. So it's going to be more of an effort to push up. It's going to be more of a seated than a perching position, if that helps. Any more questions? I think we have got a bit of time. Just, yeah, just one more. Um, do you know how the assessments work as to when to lift and when not to lift? Yes, very good question. Um, ambulance services are very good at this. Um, it's obviously in their interest to give you as much information as you can in terms of when and when not to lift. Um, so they've, there's a lot of information out there. One of, um, I've got a document that we can send. We'll probably will send it around on the follow-up email from the Southwest Ambulance Service where they've got a red, yellow, green um, flow chart to use. So you, um, when, when you can lift, when you can't lift, things like that. It does actually say in the, in the CARE Act that lifting a fallen person carries an inherent risk. Um, so as long as appropriate um, protocols doc has been gone through, um, then you can't be held liable for any, any further complications with lifting. Um, there's also an app out there that was developed by East Midlands Ambulance Service, I believe, um, that's called I Stumble. Um, it's been developed alongside Mango, who run, who um, built the camel. Um, that's that's another good process to go through as to when and when not to lift. Whilst it's been developed with Mango, it's absolutely as appropriate with the razor as well. Very good question. Um, the next thing I was going to go on to is um, lifting with a hoist and sling. In a lot of care facilities, that would be the go-to um, equipment, being as they've already got hoist and slings around to lift people. Um, and we will show you how, how that's done. I guess most people would, would know about that already, but it's interesting to see it in comparison with the other products. Um, so you can draw a direct comparison between the two. We will come back to some questions at the end. Hopefully I won't take too long in doing the hoist and sling. Again, I'm not manual handling trained, so I may be making a few errors. Um, so you have to bear with me on that. So if Ruben can have another fall for me, I'll get the hoist and sling. So again, we're going to put him into a sideline position. So he crosses his arms. This knee and roll it onto this side. Then we've got the sling here. We're going to align that along his spine. Make sure we've got it. Aligned with the sacrum and along his spine. And then roll him back onto it. Like so, and then over to over towards me. There we go. And we can get the other side of the sling out here. So roll it back onto it, and over to me. Like so. Pass the strap through the modesty loop. There we go. Then we can bring in the hoist from around behind him. Sure, we adjust the base first so there's plenty of room. Now, this hoist does go fairly low. Um, a lot of hoists will go even lower than this. Um, what we might have to do in a lot of cases is actually ask Ruben to sit up in, in a lot of care facilities. Um, it will mean having to 
try and encourage somebody to sit up who has very low um, muscle tone, which can be a challenge and also allows a lot of space for incorrect moving handling techniques. Um, so if we go with blue, if we ask you to sit up a bit, really, then I can get this in without strain. So blue on this side, sit up a little bit more. There we go. And then black on the bottom. There we go. So, making sure that he doesn't hit his head on any of the parts of the voice, which lifts up. There we go. And then we can transfer him into back into bed or back into a chair or wherever he needs to go. So undo the brakes and we can transfer him wherever we need him to go. There we go. Any questions on that? Any questions on the razor or when to use which piece of equipment? We have got another question about the razor, and that is whether you can use a footstool under the razor for someone with um, shorter legs or, say, a child. Yes, um, interesting point. Um, in terms of putting a stool for them to step off, that obviously will need to be risk assessed in each individual case. Having something to step on is another risk in terms of them falling back down again. But I, if it's been if it's been um, risk assessed, then I shouldn't see there be any any problem. Why not? Any other questions? No, that's it. Good. Okay. Um, so times when you wouldn't use the razor, um, I would. The, there's two main reasons why people wouldn't use the razor. One is which, one is where they've got very low um, core stability, and they wouldn't be able to stand even with even with the assistance of a, a stand aid. Um, you would have to use a hoist there, and um, that would typically be somebody that's totally bed bound anyway and has fallen out of bed or something like that. Then you would have to use a full body hoist. Um, the other reason is what if it's being used in somebody's own home um, for like an elderly couple, for instance, and the main caregiver is the partner. If there's another um, times when I've seen it not work is where the partner can't hasn't got the hasn't got the strength to actually lift the razor. The seat unit of the razor is, is quite heavy. It's it's um, eight and a half kilos. So if if that's if it's being used by an elderly couple, that can sometimes cause a problem. Um, but that's the only two reasons where the razor wouldn't be used. Do we have any final questions before we wrap up, Lottie? No. No. Very good. So, how do you get hold of a razor? If you have a if you have a service user who would benefit for it, or it would be of use in your facility or your organisation, um, then certainly get in touch, and we can. Um, to e email me on the on the link that would come through to register for this, and I can get something sorted out for you. We can do assessments, we can run trials, and those sorts of things if needed. Um, so next week is going to be a webinar on the Venlet turning system. So it's the system that um, assists with turning and repositioning in bed. 
Um, I there will be a link that's, that's sent round to register for that for next week. It will be at 10 a.m. Friday morning again. And um, so we we'll look forward to seeing you there. And I hope you've enjoyed the session on the razor chair. Thank you very much. Thank you.